Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. I'm getting some dirty looks for singing. I don't know why, but I shouldn't be getting dirty looks for singing, because my singing voice is superb, is it not? Uh, Who's giving you dirty looks for your singing? You were, you were kind of going, oh God, he's singing that song again. It was like, here we go again. What do you oh mean? Oh my gosh. What, what do you mean, here we go? Really? Yeah. You don't like when I sing to that song? Well, you're not, you don't have a good tune. What do you mean? I'm right on key. <laughs> no. Yes, I am. <laughs> to your ears. Wait a minute. <laughs> you're the one who can't hear music. You know, you're, you're, you're tone deaf. <laughs> oh, speak for yourself, brother. <laughs> Would you play your old, once in a while, just that old song, the lead in song? You know, the last time I did it, I got a thing from, I think it was, um, um, Tune in, saying that uh, it's copyright. And then I had to write them and say I paid for. It. I mean, I, it's too much trouble. If I play it, I will get a. I will get a a, a, a notation. Uh, my uh, my permanent record. Ah. Yeah. So I okay. Don't, I don't want to do it. But you mean uh, this one? I'll just do a second of it. Wait a okay. You would keep going bum 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 bum. Well, I just added my and, little. And, and, and you're in your tone deaf ear. And I just added my little touch. That, ladies and gentlemen, is uh, girlfriend. Hi. Yeah. Did I show you this thing? I it's got, Friday. I, I got, What's this thing? Oh, that's uh, that's a Bluetooth uh, sender from here, but it. Oh. The problem was I was going to use the Bluetooth earphones on the show because you know, makes sense. I could move around better. But I, I plugged it in, and it's got this little thing here, see, folks, that you can just put it into uh, an earphone jack, and then you can hear it on your Bluetooth. The only thing is it's slightly delayed. Oh, that's great. And I can't do a whole show with it slightly delayed. No, you, you can't. Know. But anyway, look at this. See, I got some new cleaning. I use this. What's it's that? It's supposed to clean your screen, but I use it to clean my glasses. Oh, I have to try it on my glasses. Yeah. But anyway, so it comes, of course, sealed, right? And it comes sealed in this. No, it's not a condom. It kind of looks like it, but it's not a condom. In your wildest dreams. Now, wait a minute. Now, I want you to see this. Now, look at the size of this thing, okay? You, you got that? Okay? You see you see what that looks like? You wish. For those of you who are looking at us on, <laughs> on, um, on, on, on uh, uh, you uh, YouTube. <laughs> uh, it says, what do you mean, I wish? This thing, a- that, no, that wouldn't, that wouldn't fit on mine. It says extra large. <laughs> anyway, it says, are you ready for this? Ribbed. To avoid danger of suffocation. <laughs> Keep this plastic bag away from babies and children. Do not use this bag in cribs, beds, carriages, or play pens. This bag is not a toy. Well, obviously, they had some legal issues on it. I, but, but, <laughs> I mean, obviously, you, they had listen, to put that sticker on it. If you've got on. a baby with a head that small, you better check the baby itself. He's no, probably, but it could, it could wrap it around its nose. Anyway, I've been saving that for a couple of it days now. Chew I can on throw, it I can it throw could it chew away. on it and, yeah. and suffocate. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah? Okay. And okay. obviously, for them to put a, a, a sentence like that on, they've had some legal issues. There's some lawyers somewhere saying, yeah, you know, anything plastic bags. No, no, no. They already had legal issues. No, I, I, I'm no, sure no. some kid died somewhere. No, I don't think they had a legal issue. Oh, that, been, sounds like, that sounds no. like a result of a, of, a, of a lawsuit. Well, all I know is, to begin with, why don't they just, why do they stick it on the thing? Why don't they just print it on the thing? On what thing? Oh, on, on the packaging. It's more expensive that way. Is it more expensive that yeah. way? Or just, you know, in the packaging on the inside, do not use, uh, you know, the, the the bag may suffocate kids. Well, the bag is off by the time you use that. 
Why put it on the back on yeah. Alex? What? What? You, you don't. N nothing. What? What nothing. did I do? Nothing. What did nothing. I do wrong? Nothing. You don't put it on the bottle. By the time you get to the bottle, the wrapping's off. Mm. Okay. And suffocating some infant. Well, I, I almost suffocated myself on it the other <laughs> I day. I see. Experimenting yeah. with tried it. Tried putting it up to my nose. And <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> uh, oh, what yeah. a week. I'm taking a holiday from Trump. I mean, no Trump talk. What do you mean, what a week? Is it what a week because you worked hard or because... Uh, that, that too. It was diffi a difficult week for you? I wanted to take you? today off and I couldn't. Or is it because of Trump? A combination. Well, explain what about Trump bothers you exactly because he's really a fine president. I mean, every single day <laughs> there's been something this week. But why is this week different well, than well, you any know, other you week? Well, you know, you seem to love of all the stories. Now, for instance, you got to like where the North Korea thing is concerned... You can't complain yet. You know he's going to fuck it up, though. Well, of course he's going to fuck it up. Either that or he's going to give away the store. Yeah. You I mean, know, he's a lousy and, and, business. And he'll probably want to meet on a, on a tanker or like a destroyer. Oh, well, that, that but that's not uncommon. No, but uh, he'll definitely do that, and he'll probably be wearing a war jacket. Yeah, or something like yeah. that. But anyway, uh, 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 it, uh, there's some question as whether he's going to meet with him at all. You know, if he isn't just putting up a front on this whole thing. That a lot of, he's, he's not, he's, what he's not going to do, there are not enough people in the White House right now who are experienced enough to handle these kinds of negotiations. That's right. And he thinks, you know, I wrote The Art of the Deal. No, he, to begin with, he didn't write The, the Art, Art of, of the, the deal. deal. Somebody else did. Right. And secondly. All his deals went to shit. All his deals went to shit. He was a lousy businessman. Do I want this guy doing business for my country? And then. And all they got to do is if he goes to like North Korea. And he arrives on the plane. All I have to do is put some banners Banners out. saying, welcome Trump, and pictures of we Trump. We love you. And all of that. He'll give him the he, world. He'll, he'll, give, he'll give Kim, Kim Jong-un a blowjob. By the way, I noticed pictures of Kim Jong-un. This is interesting. You know, usually dictators kind of look evil, right, in their persona. And they do that because the people they're lording themselves over have to, like, be afraid of him. All right? Kim Jong-un, in all the pictures you see him, most of them, he's either passive, okay, or smiling. Well, you have to remember, he's still a kid. Yeah, but he smiles. He's <laughs> smiling all the time. And when he's not smiling, it's like this. But it's never he's stern. Like, he's like know. the village idiot. It's never, never a Hitler-esque posi uh, positioning of himself and whatever. Or we'll just rub some, uh, some um, poison on the face of his, what was his brother-in-law or something. Yeah. Well, George Bush looked into the eyes of Putin and saw a sincere man. So, you know, I mean, who knows what's going to happen with Donald Trump? Uh, but uh, I, I, but you, see, so you kind of got to, for the time, for the moment, give him that. Although I won't say, see, they say that, oh, it's all the sanctions and the push that America did. We That's didn't, just to get the news off of the lady. We what's her name? Huh? The, well, we'll get to that in a no, second. No, but I mean, that's all diversion, to get to get away from that. She's trying, he's trying to get away from stormy weather. Yeah, I uh, mean, he did the same thing with the trailer. The day after the trailer, uh, not even the day after, within 24 hours, they released the 30,000 emails of, of Hillary Trump. Of Hillary Clinton. Clinton. Hillary Trump? Where did that come <laughs> I from? I don't know. No, so anyway, so the thing is, what I, what I did in, in, you know, I mean... Um, he, uh, his position, what he did, didn't make uh, Kim Jong-un suddenly say, oh, I've got to come to some kind of peace deal with him. And I've, you know, um, the, the whole world, pretty much at the UN, put sanctions against him. So that, that kind of maybe hurt a little bit. That wasn't a little spearheaded by the United States. That was a general thing. Yeah, but the China's UN delivering did. everything to them. Uh, China isn't talking to them much lately. Well, they're they, still delivering they, goods. And, and no, here's the thing. Uh, I heard this today. Uh, you would, uh, China and uh, South Korea have not been talking to each other much lately. South Korea. Uh, North, excuse me. North Korea. China. And North Korea. North Korea and China have not been talking to each other a lot lately. And they think part of the reason why is that Kim Jong-un's father was in bed with the Chinese, okay, and relied on the Chinese and was really became kind of a toady of the Chinese. And uh, Kim Jong-un doesn't want to do that. He wants to be independent of China. So he and China are not getting along too well lately. That's, that's at least the latest uh, theory on it. So, right? 
I think it's just a diversion. Well, anyway, uh, uh, they don't think that it's, you know, believe me, calling him Rocket Boy or whatever <laughs> didn't bring him to a, to a table. In fact, if anything, it, it kept him from coming. Don't do that. Oh, ooh, sorry. Jeez, you, you can't keep your hands off keyboards and mice even when they're not yours. True. And what were you trying to do? Were you trying to make things neater there? I was just organizing. That's my keyboard. <laughs> I need that keyboard. I have to run that keyboard. Anyway, so, uh, uh, you know, Kim Jong-un, uh, uh, I don't think, uh, is doing, I think he's doing this because he feels, and I, and, and I said this today on my Facebook page, that, uh, you know, Trump may have created a monster because what he did was he put literally put Kim Jong-un on, on, the the, on the center of the world stage. Yeah. And uh, I think that he feels now that he's in a position to make deals and so on with these various countries by playing nice. Mm -hmm. But he first, and let's, make, let, let's not be mistaken about this, folks, he had those, new, he, had, he was, had a nuclear program and he had those rockets, and it's those rockets and that nuclear program that's making people talk to him. All right, but he said he's not giving that up. Well, he didn't say he wasn't, give, he was, he wasn't giving it up. He's gonna use that as his negotiating thing. Sure. What does he need with a nuke? You know? Uh, but what he also wants is for the United States and uh, Japan to quit doing their test maneuvers on the um, coast of uh, North Korea. Because we do, we go up there with our ships and everything. We parade them and we do our little war games and stuff. And so do the Japanese, and uh, they're going to want us out of there. That was part of the deal. It's one of the things. Is, well, is that we're going to still continue doing our, our practices? Yeah, they, they we want to continue practicing in that area. And I I think that what he has a right to do then is have nuclear missiles. You know, I mean, come on. If you're going to posture, then you have to imagine that somebody else wants to protect themselves. Let's get on to the big story. Well, no, this is still the big story, but we don't have to continue with the, that story. Well, you want to get This is the story that she has been watching all day. She turns on the TV, she says, look at this, watch this, look at what's happening. Well, I'll tell you something. I think this is going to be is the thing that might do him in. What? Stormy Daniels? Yeah. Nah. No. It's follow the money. No, it's follow it, it the causes money. him problems. But the problem is, it doesn't cause him problems in the way normally it would affect the president. Let's say we found this out about Obama, we would be appalled. Oh, the Republicans would have because we don't ex we didn't expect that out of we wouldn't expect that out of Obama. Plus, he'd be dead because Michelle would kill him. But uh, the fact of the matter is that you know he he. he the, they didn't have to, um, what's the point I'm trying to make here? He, he, you, you expect this out of Donald Trump. You expect that he is that lousy human being. They'd be out fucking Stormy Daniels and a Playboy Playmate weeks after his wife just gave birth to their, their child. Well, the, the point, you know? the, the thing that might do him in is where the money came from. I mean, well, the money, no, the money, came, money didn't come, it only came from one source. Oh. It, it came from the lawyer. Oh, wait a minute. You don't know. By law, anything over $10,000 has to be that. reported to the Treasury Department. So that $130,000 was reported. And it may not have come directly from was the lawyer. Was it reported? Yeah. Was it reported as a campaign contribution? Well, that's what they don't know. It might be, it might, they might have taken See, money was, from the campaign to pay for that. Yeah, but we don't we don't know any of that. And uh, Mueller knows. Yeah, it, 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 Mueller doesn't know. They're, they're still fishing around there. I don't but, think so. But, you know, the fact is, Stormy Daniels really wants to be able to tell her story. Yeah, she's she, got a good she's story. She's got a book in it if she can tell her story. For sure. That's why they're fighting for the, why they're trying to say. But all of a sudden when he said he doesn't know her, now he's trying to keep her quiet. She's, she says she's willing to get back the 130000 Yeah, because she'll know be why? making more. Because you're going to make more money writing the book but the trump people don't want her writing the book so they'd rather you know make her have to stick to the deal which wasn't signed by him which wasn't but it wasn't what it said was it said dd aka and then blank okay a line where you're going to fill in the name later he didn't sign that 
And it didn't say who the AKA was. So it's not a valid... Uh, well, well, there's an argument. Well... That she did take $130,000. She did sign it. She could return it. Uh, but... Uh, I think there's a good case here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And there's another porn actress involved, too, now. <laughs> Jessica Drake, uh, who is... Uh, and I, I didn't... I had... Wow, I had their real names. Uh, I think uh, Stormy Daniels' name is something like so and so Clifford. Stephanie, I thought it was Stephanie, Stephanie Scli Clifford, something like, something that, like yeah. that. Yeah, um, you know, I guess you call yourself Stormy Daniels because that's a great, that's a good porn name. Well, you call yourself Alex Bennett. Uh, the best porn name for a guy uh, ever was uh, oh, what was it? It was one that people used to use all the time. I can't remember now. See, I'm old. I'm just falling apart. I can't remember shit. Neither can I. This is starting to really bother me. I sit here and I'm doing something that I've done a million times, and then I go, how do I do that? And it, and I don't know if it's that I'm getting old or I just, you know, I'm doing so much of it so often that I just get I do that too. I do stuff in the office, and it's almost like I'm one automatic. Yeah, and and, and, and if you lose, if if you're on automatic, and then you lose your pace in the thing you're doing, you're, you're you finished. know when you come in here and I'm doing the post, I I shut up, I to go away, leave get me get out of here, go because fuck yourself. If, if you ch if if you change my my routine by breaking it up, then I have to go back to it, and I can't remember where I left off. And it's hard to get back into that rhythm. Yeah. So. Uh, so you got a haircut today. Mr. Baldy. What do you mean, Mr. Baldy? This is a one and an eighth. Is that? Do well, they, they measure? Have, do no, they... No, no, they don't have. This is not a measure. It's a, do you want a one, a two, a three, a four, a five? So they have it on their, on their shaving well, thing. Well, they have, have the... these shaving right, heads. But, right. and, and so they did a two, and I said, mm, could go down a little more. He says, we'll go down to one and an eighth. They could do yeah. it like that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you. Let me tell you about this. Please tell us about it. It's 1022, so that's fine. That brings us right up to the end. Oh. Please tell us. No, I went to get my hair cut today, and I always, where I go is I go down to this really ratty place down on the, off the corner. You've seen it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's ratty, isn't it? But it's, it's packed. Ask me how ratty is it. How ratty is it? It was it, so Alex? ratty today that somebody was paying them to take care of his hot dog cart in the store. <laughs> They were, I'm, I'm, they're getting my hair cut. There's this, there's this hot dog cart. Apparently when the snows came, he wanted to get it out of the snow. So that's where the hot dog cart was in there. So anyway, so I'm, I'm not kidding. So I, um, uh, so. Well, first of all, you have to describe the scene. There are two of us in there getting our hair cut no, by normal, two hair norm, guys. No, normally. Okay, and these guys are normal. They're cutting our hair. The guy's getting me and the other guy getting our hair cut. We're normal people. Now we have, now, I, I'm, and I, there's no racism intended here, but all the people in that place, except for me, are black. Well, it's a black barber shop. It's one of those black barber shops, yeah. like you, where they become a social hub. Sure, it's right? like Starbucks. But in this case, uh, we've got one up here that's more of a social hub where everybody goes in there and everything's a lot. Oh, neater is that and where nicer. you went? No, I go to this really bad one. Oh. And these guys are down there, and there's like this big fat woman in there eating her lunch, which <laughs> happens to be, I swear to you, a giant. Blueberry pie. Oh, God. And I'm looking at her, and I'm looking at the blueberry pie, and I'm saying, you know, if you just did a few less blueberry pies, <laughs> you know. And now the guys are yelling at the top of their voice, telling stories, and this one guy going, my baby mama is so hot. You know, well, she's your baby mama. She's not your wife, you know. <laughs> my baby mama this. my What's her name? Sharika or something like that. And they're yelling and screaming, and there's six of them doing this. And I'm going, this is the best entertainment for my 12 bucks you can get Absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely, 12 bucks? Well, I, I tip the guy $3. So wow, I, give him I don't want to tell 50. you what my haircut costs. Well, my haircuts used to cost a fortune when I went to Vidal Sassoon. It used to cost like 75 bucks to do this. You know, but and now I just go to this place down there. And yeah, he doesn't do a great job because a really good haircut grows out evenly. This thing, by about three weeks, four weeks, my hair's moving every direction. Two weeks. Your so, hair grows fast. 
So I Every just place I, except your beard. But you know, for twelve bucks, for twelve bucks. You know, I can get a haircut every month, and it's no problem. You know, I'm getting my hair cut Monday after work. Yeah, but so you love this whole thing with Stormy Daniels. Oh it's, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, 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 she must. You know, it's he's trying to keep it quiet. I never knew her. Blah blah blah. And then all of a sudden, he's paying her to keep quiet. <laughs> yeah, um, it's interesting. Sunday on the Fox, they're going to have. Uh, oh, they are saying OJ confesses. It's not exactly what that is. It's, if I did it. No, well, it's it, what happened was. If I did it, I have a friend. Will you quit playing with I'm stuff? Not playing yes, with stuff. Yes, you are, Alex. Just stop it. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyway, um, um, uh, many years ago. About 10 years ago, O.J. Uh, wrote a book for Judith Reagan, Regan, who was a good friend of mine. And uh, the book was called, well, it was, he, it, she wanted to call it. If I did it. If I did it. No, uh, no. I did it. I did it. And he said, no, I want it to be called If I Did It. For his children. For his children. So it doesn't sound like a confession. <laughs> but it was. Well, Anyway, so they, they write this book, and she, it, it gets such a backlash, such a heated backlash, that the guy who was the owner of her company, which was Reagan Books, she didn't own it. It was owned by Rupert Murdoch, right? They fired her from her own company, and then they took the book off the stands, and they, let, they sold it to the Goldmans or gave it to the Goldmans or something like that, who then released it under the name, I Did It, right? <laughs> But anyway, when this book was about to be published, she did a special for Fox with O.J. talking about the whole thing and kind of like on the... How I I, did it. No, if I did it. But how he did it. If I did it, this is how it went. A lot of people feel it's him... Confessing. Confessing. But I don't know that you can take that to the bank. Okay. No, but it's... But anyway, she got fired by Murdoch. She turned around and sued Murdoch, and I think settled for $10 million. Okay? And she lost her book company. So she was out of the book business. She was one of the most successful publishers in the business. She did the Howard Stern book, and there were a whole bunch of other books. She had a great eye for doing something that was pop, you know? And uh, then she did this, uh, the, 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 the OJ book, and it was going to be a sensation. Well, they did this special, and when she had the whole problem suddenly with Rupert Murdoch and blah, 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 certainly Fox was not going to run it, right? So it was put on the shelf. Well, I don't know what it is, but I, and I think it has something to do with something else that's happening on Sunday. Now, you may remember Fox had American Idol. Oh, right, it's coming back. Yeah, it's, but it's coming back, but not on Fox. It's coming back on uh, ABC. So guess what? They're running OJ again <laughs> against American Idol. And I'll bet you the They'll OJ win. thing wins. I agree. But I was wondering how Judith was taking this because she's the interviewer on the hey. show. And um, then I saw her in a, in, in, that she does interviews on the show today right, about, about that. that so apparently she's Fine. not unhappy with oh, you yeah. Know, Anyway, I think it's it. time for me to roll over. It's almost time for you. Well, that's, <laughs> what do you mean by that exactly? <laughs> Hold on a second. Stay there while I just do a few things here. I've got a few things I have I'm to do. Over. I have business to do. I have to put up the uh, the uh, uh, the what do you call it? The okay, you the can call come in over. screen. You, you can come over now. I'm, uh, I, I opened up Skype. And roll me uh, over let me see here. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, do uh, that. Okay, call in. Okay, so now we're waiting for people to call our Oops. citizens panel. Do you? Well, I'm just, just say say. <laughs> Alex, you, would you move the microphone? Would you move the over microphone here? away from you. Yeah, away from me. I'm the star of the show. You're just my lousy guest. Oh, that's nice. That, that's okay. nice. Yeah. This uh, is my last show on the Alex Bennett program. Wh- I just wanted to tell you. Why? Because you just said that I was a lousy guest. No, I didn't say yes, you were you a did. lousy you guest. You're a very that. good guest. Look at the people who all love you. Tell them, uh, write little ch- things on the chat no, saying how much you love that. her. No, 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 no. Uh, you don't want to see how much no, they love no, you? No. Why? I just go on with your Why? show. Open it up. Would you you don't want to see how much I love you. No, so, no, you know. no, no, no. Huh? Just open it up. It's all opened up. Come on, I'm waiting. In. No. 
You're bossing my audience around now? Colin, this girl's tired. Oh, oh, here wow. comes Ron. Don't stand by. R r here we go. Oh, here, here we, we go. go. Yeah. Hi. It, God, I love that uh, microphone. How's it going? It's so real. It's so serious. Well, if you want, if you like that microphone, you can buy me one. This girl's run out of money. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. It is, it is nice. And he has a great set of pipes to go along oh, with it. Oh, he does. Your promos, Rob, are fantastic. Thanks. Really? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. How you doing, Rob? Doing pretty good. I'm so thankful it's Friday. Yeah. You've been working hard this week? Uh, it's been a long week. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah. I, had a, I had a bad day yesterday. Well, you know? well, how was it a bad day? I don't know. That's the problem. It's part of the fucked up part of being me. I woke up in a rancid mood. Uh, it just lasted that way. Yeah, you, I, I, I sometimes have wake, you wake up in a rancid mood, and then all day that permeates it, and it has nothing to do with anything that's happened. It nope. might. It, nope. I've had bad dreams where I wake up, and the rest of the day I feel like shit. Uh, at least you have a reason. I woke up, and you know what happened? I woke up, and I'm laying, I, and I had two hours before I had to wake up, yeah. and I'm laying there, and you know what I'm thinking about? The son of a bitch from Ryan Homes, the company that I bought this house from, yeah. who's putting me off and not returning calls and I've about had it with him and I'm and I'm getting so worked up as I'm laying there thinking about what I want to say to this son of no, a bitch. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. What, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? So the problem is um, this is four bedrooms, this house. Yeah. And these three bedrooms and even now it's chilly in here, but yet the thermostat is in our master bedroom and the master bedroom is fine. And all of my neighbors who have this model home are experiencing kind of the same thing. Yeah. And Ryan comes in here and they they have this gun, like a little laser thing, and it's got a laser on it. And they point it at the ceiling and they go in each room and they point and they say, well, it's within variance. We're allowed seven degrees or six degrees or whatever it is. And I'm like, well, you know what? It's freezing in these rooms. You got to do something about it. Yeah. So they offered up above each room of the door to each room. They offered to put in returns. Just take, you know, cut a hole in the wall above the door and put a uh, grate, like a like a return grate in there so that the air flows from the hallway in and out. Yeah. And I was thinking about that. And I know what you're going to say, Phil. I see you shaking your head. Uh, a guy who lives up the street from me said, I wouldn't let him do that because it's just a, it's, it's advertising that something's wrong when you go to sell your house. Right. So uh, he told how, me, how many, um, uh, uh, furnaces do you have? There's one? one furnace. I have two thermostats, one in my bedroom and one on the main floor of the house. Can it's you like zone? zone. Well, yeah. You need to, you need another zone. No, uh, that, uh, these houses don't come that way. Yeah, but you can put it in. It's just a it's a flapper, electronic flapper and another rheostat. It has that. Yeah, but you can put in more for those other rooms that aren't being kept at the proper temperature because it's reading what's in the bedroom. That's going to cost me money. So yeah. what suggested was to put these things in. And I and at first I was like, mm, okay. Spoke to the, the guy down the street who's in construction. He said, nah, that's just broadcasting. Got a problem. That's right. Yeah. So uh, what he suggested was get them to move the thermostat out of your bedroom into the hall. So I was like, hmm, that's not a bad idea. But this guy doesn't return calls. He then he nah. called me because we had this big storm here. Um, and what happened was the, you know, the, the long, what do they call them? Leaders or whatever yeah, the hell yeah. they are that go to the gutter, you know, they yeah. let to run the water yeah. went flying off the back of my house and it's laying, it was laying in my backyard. I mean, this is a tall house, right? Right. It's a walk out from the basement and then two stories. So it's, you know, high, the sea, the roof is high yeah. and this thing's laying in the heat. So I called in and said, you guys got to come fix this. The house is still under warranty. I can't drive it there, so they got to come here. Um, and uh, he, he came, and I say, while I'm up there, I'm looking out my back window, and I see all of these houses, the ones that have just been built in the last few weeks since mm -hmm. it's been cold, yeah. and there's a roof damage. Shingles are missing. They flew off the roof. So I said, I want somebody on the roof, and I want to have them check it. I don't know. I can't see anything. So this Pendleton dude calls me kid back. Drone. Huh? Kid with a drone. 
Well, okay, if you could find a kid with a drone. But anyway, even still, I paid enough fucking money for this house. So he calls me back and he says, I saw your gutter was there in the back and we'll fix that. But I looked at your roof with the binoculars and I don't see any problem. Mm -hmm. So he's just going to dismiss it. And I'm like, fuck you. You're not just going to dismiss it. I want someone on that fucking roof to look at it. And I'm getting all worked up while I'm laying in bed and all this shit. And I, I'm, the hair on the back of my neck is standing up now just from <laughs> talking about, about it. Yeah. I, can I answer your thermostat move thing and let you know what the consequence is? Go ahead. Okay. So right now your bedroom's comfortable, but the other rooms are cold. So what's going to happen is if you move the thermostat out, the other rooms will warm up, but your bedroom will get a lot hotter. Uh, uh, bedroom get hotter? Uh, I, uh, colder. It'll get colder. Don't listen the, to Phil. No, <laughs> I'm if, saying good night. If, if, if the bedroom I know, is it's, comfortable. It's getting, night, it's getting boring, isn't it? <laughs> if the bedroom's comfortable and you move the thermostat out, it's going to change what it, happens it was in the bedroom. It was exciting, by the way, while, while Rob happens. was yelling and screaming. Uh, yeah, well, it'll I, get hotter. It'll get hotter in your bedroom, so it'll get too hot. That was the reason for my ire yesterday, and it lasted all. I had a customer meeting yesterday, and I was sitting there all day. I felt like with a scowl on my face because I just wasn't in a good mood. I didn't really feel like socializing. You, I didn't feel like talking. Yeah. I, my wife got the brunt of it. She picked up my ire, and it was just a bad day. Then I wake up today, and it's like I just got through saying to my wife. She says, you look like you're in a happy mood. I said, I am, and I don't know why. Nothing's different from yesterday. The guy, I haven't, still haven't spoken to the guy about the house. I don't get it. I don't it understand have, it. It could have something to do. You know something? could have something to do with the weather. You know, I mean, we just came through some brutal weather. And so that kind of gets you, ugh, you know, and even if you don't go out in it, you know, you know it's there. It's something very present, you know. I can't explain it. All I do yeah. is just Is talking. Jason there, by the way? Jason? Are you there? Say, I can't your, tell. Your move may be to tell them that they didn't engineer the HVAC properly. Oh, they're fucking oh, Wait a minute. Look, stop with that, Phil, because I don't know what you're talking about. Most of the audience doesn't, so that doesn't make for interesting discussion. You got a guy that's unhappy. I know. I, we're listening to his I, ire and his wrath. All we uh, need to tell him is... Don't stop hitting up on this guy and make him feel like shit, you know? But you know what happens is I don't want to get into that mood again, so I avoidance, right? Yeah. That, a, I didn't really think about it. I was in an awesome freaking mood today. Look, you, it's it's crazy. Crazy. I didn't know you get warranties on homes that are built, but I guess you do, huh? Absolutely. It's like a new car. And so how long, how long is the warranty cow. for? Yeah. Different things have different lower warranty lengths. The longest is the, the structure of the house is 10 years. Okay, so they've got to do these things for you. Yeah, and if they oh, don't, absolutely. if they don't, you have legal uh, ramifications. You, you know, legal re uh, redress that you can throw on them. You know. Oh, oh yeah. You know. So I I'm just sure. I'm not happy Talk with them, everybody that yeah. has the same unit as you, and see if they could uh, you know get together and go after them to mm -hmm. re to uh, adjust or re-engineer the thing. Said so. me. You know what the guy, the guy down the street said to me? He goes, think of the house in one of two ways. Yeah. Either this is a lifetime home or it's a 10-year home. So I, uh, when you think of it that way, it changes. You know, you want everything perfect. Right. So if you think it's a 10-year home, I'm 61. Am I going to stay here till I die? I don't know. I might. Well, but if, if you built yourself a nice home that you really love, uh, I'm the type that nests. You know, I, I, I even in moving into apartments, I don't like to change apartments. I'm a nester. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, so but, I guess I am. The problem is going to be, can I afford it when I'm no longer earning? Well, how much of it's going to be is, is uh, how much of it is going to be paid off in ten years? Very it little. Depends. It, no, it depends. Um, the well, interest for the well, first time. Uh, uh, hold on a second, Phil. I'm, I, I asked him. He has the answer. Yeah. I, I tell you what, you, you talk to him, and I'll, I'll come back later. No, 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 no. Stay here. Stay here. We'll get to you in a second. Okay. But, you don't want me to be part of conversations. No, okay. No, but, I, you know, but you, what you're doing is you're throwing stuff in that kind of like the audience, that I don't understand it. You no, know? that's because you, you don't understand all, it. All I'm asking him is, you know, is he a nester, and, and does he 
perceive of himself being here in 10 years, and you have every right while the, you have a warranty for everything to be right. As you told me, they come in about a year later after the house is settled and do a lot of different repairs and stuff to... to yeah. you know, all, the, all the nail pops, all the yeah. cracks see from the house starting to settle and all that, they come back and do all that. This, that's, but pr that's, probably, that's probably the horrible for, part about buying a home, you know? Yeah, you know, it's... Yeah, you, you just expect that. Yeah, you know, you yeah. see it all over the place. I'll it's tell you who else deal. has built a home from the ground up is uh, Albert, down in Florida. He did he the did. same thing. Yeah, yeah. So he is living there. Yeah, he is living there. And no longer in Queens. No longer in Queens. And he's retired. Yeah, I guess. Wow. <laughs> you know, good for. Him. Yeah, he's a young guy. Yeah, I mean, he and uh, he and his wife are very happy down there. It sounds like he says he, the community where he had his house built, they have a recreation room uh, that uh, costs him a subscription of five dollars a year or something. He gets to use the pool, and he gets to uh, uh, they get free drinks on on Friday nights or things like that. And I'm thinking to myself, I said to him, "Are you sure you didn't?" you know, build into a retirement village? Because that's Century how it sounds. Village. What? I, it's he's, like Century Village. He's in but he's in uh, uh, Del Boca Vista. He's in Del Boca Vista. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Two. <laughs> uh, Del Boca Vista, you know what that means, don't you? Yeah. View of the mouth. <laughs> 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 because years ago, I, I had a, a girlfriend who lived up in Boca Raton. And I yeah. never knew what it meant until somebody told me it's, it's uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, mouth. what, Spanish yeah. or whatever, for a uh, rat's mouth. And if you look at Boca Raton, it looks like a rat's mouth. It's like, it it's kind of like so a nice. curvy thing. <laughs> what? It sounds so nice to yeah. say I live so in So when Boca I heard Boca Raton, Vista, the Boca Vista, I went, the view of the mouth. <laughs> no. It's just payback. Huh? You know, yeah. Spanish paying us back. Yeah. Speaking of Florida, yeah. isn't it sad what's going on with the NRA in Florida? What do you mean sad no, in, in what wait, way? Well, well because oh, wait a minute. You know, the governor signed the bill. Yeah. The NRA, they can't dump enough money, right, to get to buy votes. So now that they lost this, they're actually suing the state because they think it's not fair that 18 to 21 year olds have to wait to get a gun. You know, I think, uh, Phil, Phil, you know, just rejoined the NRA to piss us Lifetime off. Member. Huh? Lifetime member. But I, I tell you something. I, I don't mind them suing uh, because if they find that it's legal uh, to do that, I would rather the age be raised around the country. And if this is the test case and they what? and they lose that's not going to be raised the, around the country why can't a state decide the laws to to uh because there's something the called state. in a constitution well, no, no, i think i think the nra i think the nra is putting themselves on the wrong side of this debate i think so you too. know i mean rather than say okay you know we think maybe some safety things should be put into into play here uh, and just like you have to be a certain age to drive a car maybe you should be have, have to be a certain age to buy a gun and uh, we, we're not fighting for that. We're just fighting for people's rights to have You don't have a have constitutional guns. right to buy a car, but you do have a constitutional right to have a gun. Now, what the, what the NRA is doing is they're not allowing any erosion. And I, I, I support the fact that, they'll, that they should try that and to keep that from happening. On the other hand, I favor the increased age. I like what they did in Florida. I like the fact that they are arming the uh, uh, teachers, and I like the fact that they increased their waiting period. No, they're not they, arming. They're, now, you see, you see, you get your facts wrong, Phil. They're not arming the teachers. Well, they're yeah. Arm, they're going to arm the uh, coaches and the... The ancillary, they say the ancillary uh, people. Cafeteria well, people. What are they? Are they the teachers? cafeteria people, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah it's people it's like it. that. But they're not. Let me the, ask you this: What's going to happen the first time a cafeteria person kills a student, an innocent bystander? Because he doesn't like the macaroni and cheese. I don't mean for that. I mean, you press a you you press a trigger. You're aiming at the bad guy, and you hit a kid. Well, you're not supposed to do that. Oh, no, well, oh you're, you're not mentioned, supposed to do that. I, I mentioned it earlier. Uh, well, because you were you were cheating tonight, on me. Just, you were cheating on me tonight. I heard you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there was. <laughs> you were fucking another show. 
<laughs> well, I, I, I won't have uh, any come much longer. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, the uh, I think the you will. Right women, now, women, I think you will. You will that, have come. You will have come. You just won't have uh, fluid for the come to go in. In other words, you won't uh, have all the all the uh, all the uh, prostatic fluid. Yeah, no prostatic fluid. But the, but the, but, I, but, 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 the but, but the sperm. Ago. Oh, you did stop the sperm. Well, you oh, see, yeah. there you made a big mistake because now nothing will come out. In fact, you might even implode for all you know. Yeah, yeah. I'll blow up as I. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, is that what happens when you get a blowjob? You blow up. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. but, but uh, anyway, hello, Jeff. Uh, there a, uh, there's a um, uh, a facility, uh, a um, a. Uh, a veterans facility in Yonville, which wasn't too far away from where you grew up, Alex. And uh, this veterans Yonville? facility. Yonville? Oh, where is Yonville? Yonville's up by Napa. I think I remember. It's one of those towns that you, you pass by the sign. You right. Know, you, it's just below California. You pass by the sign with an arrow saying Yonville. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of wineries there and so forth. Uh -uh. Well, there is a state run. Uh, facility, yeah. uh, a, uh, a, a, a the veterans facility. Veterans facility, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think it was built in the 1850s. Well, anyway, this guy walks in with a rifle, 36-year-old veteran with PTSD, and uh, he takes a bunch of hostages this morning, around 1030 this morning. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it just ended. He's dead, and so are three hostages. Uh, I, that's another reason I say if you have PTSD, you shouldn't be allowed to own a gun. Well, well, and if you claim you got PTSD yeah. because, you know, you want some benefits, yeah. you still yeah. shouldn't be allowed. Well, to own a gun. supposedly he was going to this place and they threw him out for some reason. Now, I don't know it's that a it's a good idea if you're running if, if you're running a veterans hospital. I don't know hmm. if it's good medical practice to throw out a PTSD victim. Yeah, I understand that this this deal is this hospital is, is a retirement home. No, uh, no ninety-six-year-old people. Oh yeah, there. yeah, yeah. And uh, what is a thirty-six-year-old guy? No, but there are there are about there are uh, uh, over over the a th there are over a thousand people there, and they're not yeah. all old people. You know, it well, is it, like it is in fact I think a veterans hospital, but it's yeah. just that a lot of old people live. They have living facilities there and so on for because I noticed that the pictures they were showing of people were just people in, in walkers. And they're saying, yeah. and the guy took a rifle in there and is holding people hostage. And I'm going, how's he doing it with that walker? Uh, you know, <laughs> because the shot just didn't match up with what they were saying. Yeah, you know, uh, not good, not good. No, it was it was it was not good at all. Um, hello, Jeff. How you doing? I'm good. You have thermostat problems at all? Nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. I don't have thermostat problems because I don't have a thermostat in this apartment. I used to have three different devices in my other house. Yeah. And so you could adjust the temperature in different places. Yeah. Well, what happened here, what happens here is we have the radiators, but what they put in were what looked like thermostats. They put about three of them in the apartment. So the, it sends a signal out to the uh, back stairwell where there's an antenna that takes the information and sends it back to the people in Brooklyn who run the building. And then they decide from what they see of the heat by, by way of these, these little devices, which look like thermostats, but they're not, whether to turn the heat on or turn it off. And I think they don't look at that that often because some nights here, it's been fucking freezing. Well, so are yeah. you saying this is like a 24 by seven command center? <laughs> they go home on nights and weekends, and there's you no. Know, they, there. they, I'm sure there are people that are sometimes not there. In fact, I sometimes ha have had to call the super here and say, "Call out to Brooklyn and tell them to send up a little more heat, please." I would they'd have a computer that would just uh, regulate. That no, but stuff the, the, the well, that's what this is supposed to kind of be. But they have to see it on the other end. And, you know, let's say there it's it's Shabbos and they're just not doing anything, <laughs> you know, because these are these are, you know, uh, Hasidim. Uh, they're not uh, Saturday. Saturdays, we're not getting heat or if we're getting heat, we're getting it all the time. You know, That's crazy. well, I, I've uh, in this in my old house, I had one thermostat. Oh, here we go. Four, the thermostats fours, again. four floors above the garage. So it was five total floors and it was built on a hillside. So in, at the top floor were the bedrooms, 
And it was always hotter than Hades up there. Really? Okay. And then the other floors, it started getting cooler and cooler. Finally, what I did was I got one of those gas inserts in the living room in the fireplace. And there you can control the temperature. And the one I got, I think, could control 1,700 square feet. So that made the second and the and the uh, and the floor above it. I mm -hmm. had a half floor above it. Uh, made it very comfortable. So you know there there might be a way for you to to get some sort of auxiliary thing. I know you don't want to spend any money. He, he shouldn't have to. He shouldn't have to. Exactly. I told him. I said I didn't design this house. You guys did. You know there are times when you, you just you don't want to pay money that you don't that it's not your responsibility to yeah, pay. Well, he has you know? a reasonable uh, thing. He says you guys designed it. It's a defect in in, in design. But the, and that but should the, be tell you with a little laser they shoot up. You know, it tells you immediate temperature. Call. Don't listen to their laser. Well, to begin with, uh, yeah. No, uh, to begin with, were they shooting? Wait, hold on a second. Were they shooting at the ceiling? Yeah, they shoot. Well, it's it going to be warmer up there than it's going to be down where you're sitting. But it doesn't matter if you're measuring each room the same, right? So if they go into my bedroom, yeah, yeah. it's like a six degree. It's six to seven degrees warmer on the ceiling. There so basically, what you're saying is, I don't care what that fucking laser says. I'm freezing my ass off down yeah, here. I have to. I can make it nice and toasty in here, but in that yeah, room, you might yeah. as well you grow. You yeah. can grow fungus on your knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jeff. In the in the town that I that I live in, if you if you have a house built, you know, a new house, yeah, you gotta have that that house approved. Right. That same here. By the local town guys. Yeah. I would go see those guys. First. Those are all they're all on the payroll. No, no, no. Yeah, all, they, here they are. I'm talking about people who work for the town. I know. They're all on the payroll. Why were they on the payroll? Well, because the guy, the guy who told me to have him to move the thermostat, he's in construction. He told me, he goes, this town is so, it's a good boys club here. He goes, you can't, you can't get a word in edgewise. If they need, if they have a, a building permit and you're going to hire a contractor that they don't know, you'll never get that permit. No. They want to get, they want a contractor that they know. Okay. This is what Let me ask get. you this. Are you happy with the home? Um, I, I love the home. I think it's a beautiful home. Am I happy with, has the quality of Ryan homes gone down since 2009 when I bought the last one? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. They don't give a rat's you, you ass have about a, their you customers. Have, you their know, customer service sucks. You have a right to your happiness. I, I, I asked you before, and then we didn't get an answer because we went off on some other track. I mean, uh, 10 years from now, is how much is this thing going to be paid off? Oh, I don't know. I, it depends on what happens between now and 10 years. Yeah. I'm yeah. My, 15 or a 30 year mortgage. It's a 30 year mortgage. Yeah. A 30 mm -hmm. year mortgage. Yeah. And, and so my plan is uh, there's when, when my mother passes, whenever that is, mm -hmm. the house that we're going to sell, my brother and I will split. That money will go towards paying down a good part of this. By the way, I don't want people to get the idea you're sitting there waiting for your mother to die oh, so you can get all money. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You know, don't uh, also if if you pay it down and you don't have the interest payment, then you're going to end up paying more in taxes. So oh, some I don't want to pay it off. Believe me, this last month, last year, I didn't have a mortgage for the summer because I sold my house in May and didn't move in here and pay any. I don't think November was the first. Uh, do you know how I got hit in my taxes for that? Yeah, I do. Because same thing happened to me. Yeah, I hit. <laughs> Big, I lost a ton of money because of that. I'd much rather have a mortgage. I'm very happy to have a mortgage. Now, do I know what Trump's going to do to next year about exemptions and my paycheck and, and all the other stuff? Do I Am I taking out enough? Am I taking too much in exemptions? I don't know yet. I know there's a calculator. I haven't had a chance you know, to so go I, and take, play with it Take yet. out whatever you have been taking out already. Which is what I have. I've been and changing. then you'll if 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 it's to the good, you'll get money back next year more than you expected. If it's to the bad, you're t you're taken care of. You know. Uh, well, as long as I don't have to owe. As long, yeah. Yes, yes, Jeff. The other the other thing that I would take a look is whoever you can find out the information, as if you can see the original drawings on the building. Even if your houses are somewhat repetitive, 
you're going to find out who the architect was and who signed for this thing. Call him. Where would I get that? It's on the plan. By the way, if, 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 if on the plans you find out the architect is Picasso, you're really in trouble. <laughs> it should be on the plans, right on the side of the plans. Yeah, where will I get a copy of the plans? Oh, they're uh, at the uh, building department, yeah, yeah. and they're they're uh, available to you uh, free of charge. You just oh. Yeah. Go there, ask them for the plans well, for that thing. They sent the first people that they sent here were the yeah. guys who put the heating system in, and they went upstairs and they, you know, into this crawl space. And you know, they do they cheap out everywhere today. They don't use ducting anymore. They don't use real metal ducting anymore. They use those, they use those round, uh, like they look like slated uh, uh, like, accordions. Yeah, they, right, and they so they're flexible. Uh, and he, the guy, the guy measured in all the different registers, and he said, "Yeah, you got plenty of air coming out of each one of these. It's not that." Hmm. So I, I don't, I don't want to get into it. It's just I'm just saying. Yesterday, I, I, I just said it only to illustrate that yesterday was a day that I could have, if I had a gun, might not have been a good day. And yet today, you know, I, I, I just feel like see a that's why we person. that's why we want strong gun laws is to keep Absolutely. us protected from people like Rob on bad days. Right. You know, I might have who knows what I might have done. Oh, my poor wife took the brunt. Yeah, I apologize when I came home in the morning. I was a bastard. I just was, and when I got home, I just I said, you know, I, I'm sorry. I you know what I love is that saying that you know the only good guy. You know, the, uh, uh, the good guys with guns will protect us from bad guys with guns. But the you know, trouble is. <laughs> that uh, people are good guys with guns until they shoot them at somebody. That's true. You know, That's so, exactly uh, right. you know, yeah. he was a quiet man, usually yeah. is what you yeah. hear. Yeah, he was kept to himself. Um, the neighbors kind of thought he was a little strange, but he was nice. He was nice yeah. to the kids and the dogs. Shocked. You know, he's call into a talk show four nights a week, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm worried about you, Phil, really. Yeah. By the way, I I, I want to I want to say I, that I, 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 I in case you never get the feeling, I am concerned about your upcoming prostate operation. I talked to the doctor today, mm -hmm. and I said, "How did I go in there to get the prostate?" It's you laparoscopically know, they, now, isn't it? Yeah, like, no, but I, I said, "Did they go up the ass, or you know, what do they do?" Hmm. He says, "No." He says, uh, "We make some incisions in your abdomen." And <laughs> they're, they're a little <laughs> they're, no, it's all laparoscopic now. Yeah, he says I think five or six incisions, and uh, and they do it. And he says uh, just uh, I said you know I need to get back to work, and so uh, I, I said you know you think I can get back in, in in a couple of days even though I have the catheter? He says yeah. He says just do your Kegel exercises. Yeah, uh, I said uh, at least you bet. Rather hear oh. that they're going to make a small little incisions rather than somebody's going to stick their hand up your ass and just pull it out. You know. Yeah. Well, I, I was ready for that. But, you know, I, I'm concerned, and I, I want it to all go well for you and be as painless and as uh, er error-free as possible. Well, you know? I asked him, I said, do you put the catheter in while I'm still under? He says, yeah. I said, okay, great. I says, well, will taking the catheter out be any worse than the cystoscopy? Uh, and he says, no, it's much easier. Yeah, I, yeah. I said, oh, okay. That, that was the biggest well, just like, you know, If you need catheter hints, just call Patrick. Okay? No, but he, he they, changes them. You know, they but, just pulled yeah. the catheter out. Yeah. Right. My father had one, and he said it was the weirdest feeling in the world. Yeah, well, that's they do that with the cystoscopy, too. They just pull that thing out. And then he came like a motherfucker, right? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't hurt, he said. It's just like this wacky feeling when they pull that out. Really? Yeah. Son of yeah. a bitch. Well, you've had a cystoscopy, right? Oh me? Two of them. Yeah. Two of them. Oh, and one of them so you know it feels and like one it. of them gave me an infection. Yeah. 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 Oh, I had this one doctor. He was like, he loved that. And I think you're gonna need another cystoscopy. You know why he liked giving cystoscopies? It was uncomfortable for you, but it was worth about a thousand bucks to him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I have this doctor, this uh, urologist who uh, loves to stick things up my ass like he gave me a, a sonic uh, look at my at my prostate to make sure it was okay and that's a good way to look at it because you can see the lumps and if there are any problems with it and he, he, he did that the last time I was in on my bill 400 bucks how long was it in about a minute and a half when I had the prior uh, the biopsy they actually uh, on the prostate they actually had a camera 
uh, and they could see. Well, and that's they could that's the it. sonic. That's the sonic sonogram yeah, thing. Yeah, but it also clips if they want to take uh, if they want to take some of the yeah process. Right. Yeah. And that hurts. Uh, well, it, it didn't hurt as much the second time as the first time. First time I thought I was going to die. But it's like these little snips. And uh, you can actually feel the prostate does have nerves. Well, the thing is that um, the reason why they uh, people my age, they suggest don't get a PSA test is because, number one, if you're getting it now at this point in your life, it's probably very slow growing. And... Doctors will be of a notion to give um, uh, biopsies, which can have far more worse ramifications than just having a little cancer on the prostate. Yeah. yeah. Well, bottom line is, uh, I said to the doctor, I said, you know, my insurance, I had to renew it last year. I had cancer. It was my life insurance was very high. So uh, and I got a whole life policy because, uh, you know, just a term would have been outrageously expensive. So uh, I said, can I now, after you rip this out, will I be, I'm cancer free, right? And he says, yeah. And he says, well, then, you know, I don't know how long the insurance company is going to make me go. You know, my age will increase and it'll get just as expensive. You know, yeah, uh, but. Is it five I've years tried. with yeah. cancer, right? Isn't it five well, years Well, no, with when, if, they, if they remove um, his prostate, forget it. There's no cancer, right? Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's it. They got it. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so it's one of those things where, yeah, a lot of other operations like the one my wife had, my ex-wife had and so on uh, on her, on her, uh, uh, for her pancreatic cancer. Yeah. Five years, you know, then you're considered somewhat out of the woods with this. I think you're considered out of the woods as long as it hasn't spread. You're out of the woods the minute they take it out. Yeah, you know, I, had a I mean, Rudy Giuliani is walking around without a prostate and they, he got had his ripped out about what, 20, 15, 20 years ago. Who's that? Rudy Giuliani. Oh, OK. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. He did yeah, have prostate yeah, cancer. Yeah, and a lot of people, a lot of people had it. It's very, you know, it's very common. It's very now, Marjorie common. had a friend that had prostate cancer that had some other kind of procedure. And then uh, it came back and uh, it, it was more aggressive and he died, right? Uh, he had prostate cancer, uh, yeah. and he, I, I, you know, I don't know if he caught it late or whatever, but, and he was a much younger guy, too. You know, the younger you get it, the more dangerous it is. Any at my, cancer. At my yeah. age, my chances of getting uh, prostate cancer eventually, if I live long enough, is about 80% or something like that, you know. Very but it's not the kind of prostate cancer where they go, well, we got to go in there and take it out. You know, yeah. they'll say, say, well, wait and watch. It probably isn't going to have much growth in the next couple of years. You know, it's just going to, you know, and uh, that you're going to die before it, which is not a pleasant way to say things, but you're going to be dead before it gets to be a problem. And yeah. uh, that's why they also suggest that, you know, people my age don't get a PSA, although my urologist wants me to, you know why? So he can have it's me come back. Dollars. He can have me come back with, he says, come back in six months, get another mm -hmm. test, come back in six months, and then uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at that and see if it's changed at all. And then, of course, I'll go there and he'll say, well, while you're here, let me, he either does the outside sonogram, which is 400 bucks, or the one that goes in your ass, it's 400 bucks. And then he walks out about $700 richer. You know, and now with my new insurance plan from SAG after, he's going to be very wealthy because they pay a lot. You know, <laughs> they're very good about this. Um, I by had the a way, new doctor this year because I moved and she didn't do a prostate exam. She did a PSA test. Yeah. Well, and, uh, give her some a, indication a, or something. A you digital know. exam, which made me fine. I'm fine with that. My other doctor never missed a chance. See, I never had a woman urologist to stick her finger up my ass. If that yeah. had been the case, I'd be going there twice a year and not complaining about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did I kiss the first? That. What? What? I got rid of that uh, doctor lady. What? She was the, cr the creepiest. The urologist? Ever had. Was she a urologist? What's creepy about her? You no, know, she was the general. Oh, GP. Thing, and yeah. she thought she should do it. Oh, you know, my GP is a cardiologist. OK, so every time I go to him, he goes, well, we better take a look at that aortic stenosis you have just to make sure it hasn't changed. And of course, it never changes, you know, 
Uh, so how's he checking? He tells you to bend over? No, he has a machine that he bought for a lot of money, and he's got to make the money back off the machine, right? So he lies me down. It's just all these things are sonograms. It's like a sonogram, and he go, I'm on my side, and he runs it up one side and down the other, and he's, and he's checking for stuff, and he goes, okay, I just looked at your heart, and uh, uh, the aortic stenosis is the same as it was two years ago. Okay. But you got but, twins. But next year we'll have to do it again. You know, so... Hey, the way I'll tell you, doctors are doing, you know, it used to be the old days where a guy was a doctor and he bought a yacht immediately. Uh, today, it's not that kind of profession anymore. Uh, the money is not there like it used to be. Uh, and so these guys have to do all these things to, you know, to begin with, the insurance companies only pay, a, uh, insurance companies are only paying partial. Okay. They're afraid to get sued, you know, if, if, if they don't do these tests. No, no, and that's not it at all. I'm, not, I'm telling you this right now. If you look at, if you had Medicare like I do, and you have, uh, 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 um, a, uh, what do you call it, a supplemental uh, thing, uh, you get an accounting of how much they charged and then how much Medicare and the insurance company paid. And when you right. look at that, I start feeling sorry for the doctor. The doctor charges $200 for the visit. Medicare says you're getting 76 bucks. You know, so they got to see a lot of people. They got to use a lot of, uh, uh, of uh, angiograms or whatever the thing is he does with me. You got to do a lot of sticking sonar up a guy's ass in order to just kind of make a little bit of money out of it. You got to pad the bill. And I don't mind them doing it. It's not being done on my buck. It's being done on the buck of my insurance companies and on Medicare. Uh, I don't well, mind if they do that. You know, that's the problem like with... Uh, you know, these kinds of uh, services is people don't give a shit. It's like going to a buffet. They'll uh, fill up the plate, the fourth plate. They'll leave it on the table, and it's a, it's just a waste. If you watched, you know, what, what was being paid, and that's that's what... Uh, well, but but uh, all, I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is that, that uh, I understand why doctors are padding the bills these days because they're not getting as much as they used to off of their charges. This is why they also charge more so that they get more of less you know well I, I went to this lecture with forbes you know the uh the malcolm forbes son i forgot the guy's first name anyway uh he he said that he knew a guy that went for an operation and it was uh, it wasn't an elective operation but it wasn't critical that he have it right away so right. uh the doctor had sent him to one place and it was going to be eleven thousand dollars and so he called up a couple of other places and he got it for 60 something hundred dollars uh, only because he shopped around. And if the charges that hospitals charged were more transparent uh, and their record of uh, mistakes were more transparent, we would have uh, health care that cost less and was, sup and was superior. Uh, but because they hide all of these things and, and we're and we're saying, hey, the insurance company pays for it. Well, it's not my money. What do I care? And that's and that's why we're in the state of uh, uh, that, that we are with medical. I agree with you on that 100 percent. I think you're right. And I think the insurance is the symptom of a bigger problem. The, these high rates, you know, it all started with all the suing and all the. You well, know, look, but today, still. today we have this guy, Scarelli, get sentenced to seven years in prison. Now, he got, didn't get sent to prison for upping the prices on an AIDS drug. By the way, this was the guy, in case you aren't familiar with it, folks, who um, had this AIDS drug. He bought, he bought the company that had an AIDS drug, and it was like, I don't know, $100 or something, and he immediately raised the price to 500 all right? And everybody hated him. He came, became the most hated man in America. So they then went out and did a little digging up. They saw that he had defrauded some of his investors, and that's what they popped him on for seven years. Uh, but Scarelli is considered this ne this horrible guy for what he did, and he was. But, you know, he did what every other pharmaceutical company in the country is doing. Um, uh, I just found it out recently from me getting Cialis for my benign prostate hyperplasia in that um, I, I had to go get prior authorization in order to get it, and then I got it, and I got it from 
my insurance company, my pharmaceutical insurance company, which makes me buy three months at a time, and it's amazing how cheap my drugs are. I've cut my drug costs by two thirds. Yeah, I told you it's cheap when you literally use buy two thirds. Okay, yep. express scripts uh, by two thirds. I get the Cialis, and it says on there, your pharmac pharmacy plan saved you. Thirteen hundred and seventy-seven dollars, yeah. and I'm thinking about this, and I'm going, that how much does C the how much does uh, I can't remember who makes Cialis, how much if uh, do they Pfizer. Uh, Pfizer, how much do they charge? I thought for, Pfizer made Viagra. For, for, no, no, uh, for a, for, for, a, a for a for a one month supply of this stuff, which is uh, you take it's a daily Cialis, okay. It's five hundred dollars a month. Okay, I'm getting it for what thirty sixty six dollars a month or something like that. You know, uh, but uh, at thirty three, at five, that, it's five hundred dollars a month. What they're holding men's boners hostage. How it's many pills luxury did you get in the three months? Huh? How many you get in three months? You get you get ninety pills. Yeah, ninety. Yeah, they come in three different bottles that say number one of three, number two of three, number three of three. You know? Oh, I get the big bot. They send me the big. Yeah, well, one. I go to I I go to a wall. They have Walgreens here. They do this their thing through Walgreens. You can go to this Walgreens, and they make it up, but they do it that way. I see. As a, I think they just do it because you know it's in some ways it's it's easier for you if you want to just this month I'm filling up my pill thing, you know, and oh here's this month's supply, but. Uh, all I'm saying is, when you think about the prices they're charging for this stuff, I mean, Cialis? Come on, let, let you know, f figure you, you, they could probably sell it for $100 a month and, and, and may still make a lovely profit off of it. But they mm, know what it's uh, being used for. Oh, you've got Viagra. What is it? What's the company on there? Pfizer. It is Pfizer, then somebody else is Cialis. I can't remember who. Um, why, were you taking Viagra? Yeah, especially when I was dating five girls. When you were dating five girls, you needed the, the Viagra. Oh, I had them coming in the morning, the afternoon. I the never, evening. I never had to take any boner pill when I was dating five women. Yeah, but you were also twenty-seven. But uh, no, I was. Oh, this, in, I was in my forties. This 40s. expired in October of fourteen. I, I wonder if they. Oh, it's good. They, it's good. You know what they did? The government. And this is a hint to all our audience out there. Here's a little pharmacy hint for you. Let's say you get, oh, I don't know, some pill for something, and you're young, or maybe even get Viagra. And you uh, uh, say, um, I have, like, some antibiotics that I have here in case I get something. Okay, the doctor gave me a supply because it was for uh, diverticulitis. Like, if I'm traveling to Europe and I get it, I then have this little supply, and then when I come back, I can yeah. get it taken care of. Anyway, uh, I looked up to see, you know, it says like one year from this date, throw this away. It's not mm -hmm. any good. I looked, if you look it up online, ladies and gentlemen, to see about the expiration date on drugs, what they say is that the United States government did a survey, did a, did a, a, a what do you call it? A, a, what's the word I'm looking for here? It, they did a, a study uh, to see how long medicine lasts. And what they found out was 15 years. The reason the drug companies put that on there is they, they guarantee that is the effective date, that it has its full potency, but also because they want you to go buy more. But the government said to all their facilities, Keep it. You keep using it for seven years. Keep passing out the pills you bought yesterday for seven years. You know because we found that the potency doesn't diminish enough that it would make the pill not work. So, mm. well, you, you, it, I, Jeff knows about this stuff. I I don't buy things in in three month increments uh, anymore because I found a lot of the pills that I was taking. Uh, I, it was canceled. You know, that, that drug is not working well enough or you really don't need it anymore or whatever. And so I was spending a lot of money for stuff 
that ultimately, what are you going to do? You got to throw them away. But I have like a, a, a generic Crestor that I use. Rovastatin or Rovastatin. I, I, can't, I can't remember how it's pronounced. Or, Something like uh, that. And I was yeah. paying $35 a month. I'm now paying $25 for three months. So I don't care if all of a sudden my doctor two months from now says stop taking it. You know, that's, that's how I feel. It's way You're cheap. The guy yeah. with the full plate left over at the buffet. No, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, listen, I'm delighted with this. I'm going to tell you something. I've been feeling very bad and very depressed about something. Let me tell you folks about this. Oh, Alex, you're depressed? How unusual. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been depressed about the fact that, you know, she's out still working, doing, got a good job with the Chinese, and she makes really good money, and, you know, she makes our life better by bringing home the, the bacon. And I've been very depressed because I've been feeling that I wasn't doing anything for this family and that I'm just kind of like a leech here, you know, uh, and that she's my 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 hooker that's out on the street coming home, bringing the no, money home. You call it a Mac. Yeah, a Mac. yeah, I'm a Mac. Yeah. yeah. And then last night I had this sensation and I talked to her about it today. I said, I've been feeling rather useless. I said, but ever since we got this plan from sag after which is I'm telling you, it's a gold-plated medical plan. It is some people, everybody I've ever talked to says, SAG was always considered to have the best medical plan in the business. And I suddenly realized we're now getting this plan for, uh, what, $534 every three months? You know, that's, that's the money I'm saving on the drugs, okay? And on top of that, her company is paying for it. But I said to myself, maybe I'm not useless. Maybe all those years of keeping my membership with SAG-AFTRA, it's paying off now. And I've, I've given us a better, uh, a better quality of life by having this medical plan, which even if she stopped working tomorrow and her company stopped paying for it, we could afford, you know? And uh, so I feel, I feel much better about myself because I'm, I'm worth something to the welfare of this family. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, you could, Jeff. You could improve improve that uh, strategy. Is you could sign up with a couple of psychiatrists at the same time. Uh, a couple of psychiatrists. Yeah, it'll yeah. make you feel better. I don't know. I think you yeah, have don't don't don't, 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 don't insurance quite a bit. Oh, we also got dental with this up to twenty five hundred dollars a year. Uh, which is better than any plan I've had in the past. They're usually fifteen hundred. Huh? Is it a 50-50 match? Well, no, it did different. Uh, like if you get your teeth clean, it's everything. Oh. You know, and if you get your uh, tooth replaced, it's like 50, a crown, it's 50-50, you know. But uh, but there's a $2,500 max, but usually these plans are only $1,500 max. So it's great. It's a great plan. So I feel, I feel good about it. By the way, is anybody else going to call tonight? This is the lightest night we've had. Last mm. night we were packed. We were packed the night before, a, a, a full full uh, complement of people. Is anybody else going to call me? Or I mean, I don't mind this group of people. They're very interesting to talk to. And there's one in the group who will piss us off, which is very good for, for the show. So, <laughs> you know. Hey, do you want to hear what happened to me the other day? I saw it just every year. You know, in the old days, you used to get a medical plan and not think about it, right? Right. You know, if nothing changed in your life, it went on. Right. You know, you did nothing. It's time to sign up again, open, blah, 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 right? Well, I work for this really huge company. And with huge companies, especially now, every year, and every company does this, every year you need to re-sign up because everything changes, right? And right. they have different plans and have different companies. You could go with Anthem. Oh, so you, you, go oh, with oh, so you, you have a, you have a choice. Yes, yeah. there's a, a plethora of choices, right? I'm t it's a smorgasbord of medical. You can do Kaiser, you could do whatever. So this year, I picked something. I did it back in October of last year. Yeah. And then come late Jan late December, all the cards start to show up. So I got my card for my, you know, the Optum RX, yeah. and that's through United Healthcare, And that's it. That's all I got. Right. So now I have to find a new doctor. So I go and I find the new doctor in this area because I moved. Yeah. And I go and I say, I have United Healthcare and I hand them this card. And the card says, this is prescription only. I assume that it was 
yeah. You know, yeah. So go to get my physical. Month goes by, and I get a bill in the mail for two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah. So I open the bill, and it says, uh, you know, the prostate test. It's this much money. Insurance zero. You know, this this test. How much money? Insurance zero. So I called them and I said, "How come you know I'm not?" Uh, well, you had a minimum, didn't you? Had a you had a uh, so physical is always free. Oh, okay. Physicals, you know, wellness, right? Always free. In other words, it doesn't go. You don't have to wait for your uh, max, your your uh, limit. In other words, you yeah, don't. There's, pay there's a, no deductible. Yeah, it's just the physical once a year. You get your physical, and that's all. And that's been from. I mean, every. Well, company, it's to the advantage of the insurance company that you get your physical. Right. And yeah. so so she said to me, yeah, well, we called your insurance company and they said you're terminated. What? <laughs> That's what exactly was my response. What? I'm Good full time employed. Out. Been with this company two years. I'm, it's coming out of my paycheck. They said, well, they said you don't have insurance. So I log into the website and I could see I got insurance or at least it looks like I do. So then I got a call. Now, so I go to my benefits page with my company. But the problem is this benefits page is so unwieldy because there are nine gazillion choices. So then I finally called HR. Mm -hmm. And I, what is going on here? And they said, well, you don't have United Healthcare. You've got Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield. So I had the wrong, and now I'm on the phone. I'm on the phone with United Healthcare, and they said, you don't have insurance with us. And the reason why I was able to log into the website is because I used to have insurance with them. So what did, what, what, did you give the doctor the wrong number or something? Yeah, gave him a card. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I gave him a card because that's the card I got in the mail. But it says on it, this is only for prescriptions. I didn't see. It's a little small little print. Now, do you, is a Optimum RX when you get the ninety days? Are they cheap too yeah. through them? Yeah, ten dollars. See, I because think we, we 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 could have had Optimum RX and we didn't do it. We didn't go through. Yeah, and I said so we've been paying. I think we've been paying more money the last couple of years for drugs than we had to. Exactly, because uh, if you go down to the local CVS or Walgreens and do 30, 30 days, yeah, you pay a lot more than you do for the. I'm 90. paying more, as I say, for my uh, for my uh, for Robostatin or the statin that I'm taking. Uh, I pay more for uh, for th uh, uh, one month at the at the CVS than I'm paying for all three months through my prescription right. plan. So That's you, you, you want to hear an insurance horror story? Uh, my girlfriend uh, has a Mika, had a Mika insurance for her car. Yeah. Uh, she's uh, two weeks ago, Sunday, she's coming up 680. She gets a flat tire. Okay. She pulls over. She's on a very, very busy freeway. She doesn't call me at first. She's sitting in the car. She calls a Mika and she says, I need roadside assistance. I have roadside assistance. Uh, the woman on the phone says, No, you don't have the roadside assistance. She says, yes, I have the card. I've been paying for this ever since I started with Amica, and uh, I have it. And they said, no, I'm sorry, we can't send a truck. I said, so she finally calls me after being out there for two hours, and she calls me, and she says, yeah, I'm you know, here somewhere in Milpitas. So I, I drive. I actually see her on the other side of the freeway. Mm -hmm. I got to go down and exit and then back. And I look, and the tire wasn't flat. All that came on was the low air light uh, on the dashboard. But meanwhile, so I told her, okay, follow me. We get back to the house. Uh, I'm pissed because here they leave somebody standing stranded on the freeway discussing coverage. You know, send her a bill if she didn't have coverage. But the fact was she did have the coverage. So the next day we canceled Amica and they refunded uh, all the years coverage that she had for the towing and, uh, you know, now I'm going to write a bad Yelp, but, uh, yeah. it, you know, these but, guys I mean, left uh, her on uh, the freeway. Uh, you know, uh, these are, these are, these are the kind of problems in life that we shouldn't be having. Well, you know, you buy some insurance, you buy some insurance. And right. it should just, you shouldn't have any problems with it. No, you know, I'm, I'll tell you where, where I'm very lucky 
with the SAG after thing is as opposed to going to, a, you know, like I had to get that prior authorization, I didn't go through the uh, through Express Scripts. My doctor sent a uh, fax to SAG AFTRA, and their plan handles all the claims. Didn't and they're very good about today? it. They're very good about it. Didn't you read that thing today on the SAG AFTRA insurance that they, they went bankrupt and they just eliminated oh, their coverage for all of their oh, yeah. uh, uh, empl uh, people? No, I didn't, Phil. Oh, well, I'm sure I'm sure I will too. read about it after the show is over. And, <laughs> and, then, and then, then when you find a dead body here when the cameras go on on Tuesday, yeah. uh, you'll yeah. know why. Yeah, um, well, I guess you won't switch it off to the next show. No, you know something? All these years that I belonged to SAG after, and I belonged to them when I didn't even need them, right? I could have taken a, 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 a honorary withdrawal for the time being when I didn't need them. I still kept being a member. And it finally paid off. It, I, I finally thought, got something for my money. I thought when you got in that, I, and you say no, but I thought you told me that you wanted the insurance and here it is, 35, 40 years later, you finally got it. You, know? well, you see, I couldn't get the insurance over the years because I wasn't working in, at an after station long enough to make enough money in every quarter to buy their insurance. Well, didn't but they somehow, say somehow with this thing, it's because I'm a senior member. They are offering this to me. So. Yes, but you were a union signatory. And uh, and I thought that that was the reason. One well, of the well, reasons I became why. a union. No, I became a union signatory because number one, Alex Bennett was employed by Bennett right. Communications, and right. so as a union member, I didn't want to work for a non-union shop. So because right. I worked for you know, so what we did is I you know I, we, my company Insurance. paid into pension welfare and into my health and everything else. And one day they said, oh, you can't do that. That's a sham. You're doing that, blah, 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 blah. And we said, no, we're doing it because we really do, you know, want to be a union shop. And we do do other stuff. And we will be hiring people from time to time. And we just want, you know, Alex is a union guy and he wants to be in the union. And they said, no, you can't do that. And you know something? They never returned all the money we sent them for pension and welfare. And it never got put, uh, credited to my... Uh, to my account. The only pension and welfare I have is for the time I worked here in New York and, you know, a few things like Comedy Tonight and the TV shows that I did that got me some SAG after uh, bucks. HBO. I just got another payment from after uh, from uh, HBO for $77 for a Bill Maher special they run. Uh, and over the years, that's made me a lot of money. Just, you know, it, it was like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, and every year I you know, get a check for 77 bucks. It's not bad. So where do they run these specials? On HBO Go. Oh, okay. I don't have If HBO you go to the that. HBO Go and you uh, you look up the Bill Maher special, uh, okay. the voice at the beginning of it is an, uh, introducing Bill Maher is me. Ah. Yeah. There are also a whole bunch of other shows I did for them, but they don't, r don't run them that often. And they also run them on HBO, too. They run a lot of the one-night stands on HBO. Uh, wasn't bad for, you know, one day's well, work down in Hollywood. Had one of those one night stands. I got this Viagra left over. Yeah, from right. 2014. <laughs> 50 milligrams. That's the stun version, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I have put, hundreds too. Put, put, put your penis on stun. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Boy, is it, anybody else going to call us tonight? And if you don't, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> fuck you. Uh, you know, I don't know what happened. Uh, you know, of course, it's fr Friday nights usually were our heavy nights. It's not like I'm having a period. Um, uh, were our heavy nights, and now they're getting lighter, and I don't know why. But, you know, whatever. Uh, it used to be a special night. Used to be a special night? Yeah, because it was the only night that you would televise the uh, the thing. Well, we have, a, we have a lot of people watching the televised version tonight. A lot of people. I, In fact, we're having less people listening to the audio because mm -hmm. what they do is they get to gabnet.net and rather than click the thing that says, you know, you want to listen to the audio, they, there's a picture there with the audio. So they don't, you know, they don't well, need to. I, I think that you need to put your... Um, subscription to sign up for uh, what is it uh, 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 YouTube uh, it need you need to have a button on everything you do 
so that uh, because you have 500 and something YouTube subscribers, yeah. if uh, you have 5,000 Facebook subscribers, if you had 5,000 YouTube subscribers, um, you would even yeah. have a here, greater here, viewing audience. I, I mentioned this last night, and it, it is truly something that depresses me no end. You know, I will do a, a this show, and then I will put it on Facebook. And maybe I'll get, like the other night with the Larry King thing, I think I got about 135 views of that because we don't do it live on on uh, on uh, Facebook. Yeah, I, I listened to that. You said you got 1,000. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So yeah. the other day, I stick a camera outside out of my window at the snow. And it's not even a good-looking picture of the snow. It's a brick building in the background. All right? And I keep it on there for about two hours. I come back, I look, and it's like, I don't know, 300 people have watched that. Wow, 300 people watched that? 350? By the end of the day, over 700 people had watched the snow falling. And I'm thinking, here I come on here every night. I beat my brains out to try and be entertaining, have a good citizens panel. Uh, I've got some good people working the citizens panel. Uh, I've come up with a new approach to broadcasting. But I put out a picture of just snow falling, and I get more viewers than I get doing this. Now, do you That's use depressing. What? Do you, do you use clickbait like uh, Harlem mugging camera no so, no yeah, they're watching no. for muggings no. down on the 116th no i don't do anything like that uh, you know you should you know those, those are the kinds of things that get subscribers i said snow oh. snow in two uh, uh two zero zero six you know uh and uh, uh one zero zero two six and i uh you know i mean it it boggles my mind, and as I said last night, I'm thinking about starting to do a a slow video channel, just stuff that's slow. Like, uh, well, I'll, uh, I'll I'll have a board, and I will paint it, and then we'll have the camera on, and you can watch paint dry. You know, <laughs> and, and, and I'll bet you, I bet you, I I'll bet you any amount of money you get if I do that on Facebook because it goes out to all five thousand people. I will yeah. bet you I can get seven hundred people watching paint dry. I think you should do it. You know, the, the problem that I have with getting a large audience is that when I left Facebook, where I had 5,000 people that all got alerted when I would go on the air, right? They don't get alerted anymore. Yeah. So the only, people, the only people that get alerted are the people who subscribe to this channel of mine. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed people, please do it. I need, I need to get up to 1,000, and it's, it's going slowly, but I'm getting there. But... I need to get up to a thousand and tell your friends to do. They never have to watch it. Just you know, just subscribe to it. The, go instance, go watch. Go watch the girl putting on the makeup or whatever, or the cat playing a piano. That's fine with me. But subscribe to my channel. Do you have a subscribe thing on your Roku uh, no, uh, deal? No. So no. Well, you should. No, there, no, I can't. There's no. You can't have a button. No, there's a, uh, there's a limitation to what I, I can't do. That I, we, we don't. There's nothing on Roku. That is, uh, what can we call it? Links to stuff. All right. Well, what about when you, uh, uh, when you're doing this show, uh, say if you're watching on Roku, please uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel. Well, you, you just know, you just said it, and if somebody's listening to us it. on the Roku channel, they're listening to us. I understand, but you got to do it early before they turn it off. You know, and then I tried a thing last week. What I did is I figured, well, if, if you get it, there's bait in in putting on a video because it, it alerts all the people. Uh, why don't you? Uh, why don't I just put out a video that runs during this show that tells people where we are? So I did that, but that didn't get that many. Oh, I got I got about a couple of hundred visiting that. You know. Uh, but it's just, I just think that I've got to start a real slow channel. Something where, where nothing much ever happens, you know, like me watching television. Or, um, you know, a, a, just a picture of the wall across the street. I'll bet if I do just the wall across the street, I will get at least 300 views. I think that if you uh, did a video on how to be a broadcaster and things like that. I don't know, no, 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 that will not get me the kind of views that paint drying will get me. No, uh, you're looking short term. 
See, what you want is you want subscribers. I don't want to give anybody tip, uh, tricks of the trade because I don't have any to give since the business that I did all these years doesn't That's exist better. anymore. You ever see those advertisements for the nursing college where, you know, you spend 30 grand and they'll get you a job and the job never comes? If, well, it's it's the same oh, thing. Oh, I can do you a video. I can do, I can do videos here. Like I see people doing like the 10... Uh, 10 best movies ever made or the 10 worst right. movies ever made. And then they run a little clip of all the movies and, right. and, and they, they get like a hundred thousand views, you know, right. Well, that's, that's what that's you have to do. That's what you have to do. And then say, subscribe to my YouTube, ch YouTube channel, which happens to be Gabnet. And when you do that, you, you, uh, uh Gary Vaynerchuk had a, a book uh, called uh, jab, 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 right hook. And what, uh, and it had to do with getting, uh, the people on the internet to uh, subscribe to his thing, to listen to his thing, and then when he came out with something that he wanted to monetize, they would buy it because they were getting. Uh, I have free tried. You don't know that I haven't tried this, Phil. Um, I don't care if you. I, in have, fact, I have, have a thing. I have a thing that if you watch this show at the end of the show, I can only do it during the last thirty seconds of the show. There's a subscribe button that pops up. Hey, I I see this show every day. I'm on it every day, and I'm telling you, you that, may be the, the Gary Vayner truck, <laughs> <a> truck approach. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack, turn on your camera. What did you say? Uh -oh. I said that may be the problem. But Phil's here every, every day. day. <laughs> I got to figure out how come my camera isn't working though. Uh, let me. Oh, wait, wait, I see right down there. Hey, I got an idea. You're talking about and why? And why is it your camera was always placed so badly that you look like Kilroy was here? Yeah, well, let me try adjusting it. Jesus. Here we go. Not, n n yeah, not, that's much better. Oh, what? good. Oh, God. You're, hey, you're black. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, folks, welcome. There's a Negro in the house. No wonder at those last few radio stations I, I worked at, they wouldn't serve watermelon at the picnic. Yeah, yeah. They were worried I'd start tap dancing. Let me put the women away. Whatever happened to that? I love you know. I were you ever offended by the term Negro? Uh, nah, nah. I mean, than us nah. Being I, mean I think one of the funniest. I think one of the funniest lines ever in movies was in National Lampoon. Uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, what was the frat house? Animal House. Yeah. In which the guy says Negro the Negroes okay. stole our dates. Yeah, you know, it's one of my favorite lines ever, of all time. What? The, the only term I've ever been offended by is "you're fired." Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it's no different than we being called Jews. I mean, you know, I'm not offended because somebody says, "Hey, are you a Jew?" Yeah, I'm a Jew. You know, you know what always bothered me? Uh, a kite never bothered me for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, German slang. Uh, yeah, no, no, it was actually it was Keichel was the uh, check mark. They put on you at Ellis Island. It was called a keikel. Oh, yeah, really? Like they take a chalk and they go, you know, he, he can go ahead. Every day. Yeah, uh, it was called a keikel, and that's where kite came from. Okay, but kite never bothered me. You know what always bothered me when people would use the expression? Hmm. So I jewed him down. Yeah. yeah, I that bothered me. How about you, Jeff? How'd you feel about that? Yeah, that's, that's a I don't like that. Hey, yeah. but they say the same thing about Scotch people, you know, that... Uh, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. The Scotch mm. are thrifty. The Jews are cheap. Okay? Yeah. Now, True. thrifty <laughs> is an attribute. Cheap isn't. Yet it's the yeah. same thing. Yeah. You know? So, you want to talk... Hey, listen, that's not why I called you. Oh. You're talking about having a slow channel of paint on. <laughs> yeah. I throw down the gauntlet... I throw down the gauntlet right now. You put up a channel doing that, and I'll put up a channel of me sitting on the toilet reading a newspaper, taking a dump, and I bet I get more viewers. Uh, <laughs> not really, because I think the problem there is you're not going to be as attractive on a toilet and as non-threatening as paint drying on a board. You think I would not be attractive sitting on the toilet? Not as you would be. It, it, you it, have, it, it, I, I would say that it's a sight I don't want. It's a, it's a sight that even thinking about me wants makes me want to rip, rip my retina out. Hey, wait, isn't <laughs> yeah. he the Eldridge Cleaver of toilet sitters? You know. Well, you know, uh, one night, and I don't remember what night it was, but you were talking about somebody on your panel 
had mm-hmm. installed this high tech toilet. Now that oh, was that Renee. Was, uh, Renee. 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 Was it Renee? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that sort of rolled over. It, it was. It was called the Blasto 360. <laughs> no, it was a Toto. <laughs> well, well, that sort of, you know, rolled over on my show. And I'll be damned if we didn't get more people wanting to talk about toilets one night than I would have thought possible. And guess who got ticked about it? Amy. Uh, Amy. Yeah, Amy. Why'd you get she, ticked about it? Huh? Why'd she get ticked about it? Uh, you know, she's a woman of a certain age. <laughs> and uh, she just got ticked about that we would get all these people talking about toilets. Well, is it, wasn't this is it, wasn't this thing like it was almost like a bidet that it, it flushed you no, out? No, but yeah, it had the, it's a seat with uh, uh, that acts like a bidet, and and I think it might self clean. I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I would hope so. You yeah. know what happened, San Francisco, uh, and you. This was long after you left, uh, uh, Jack. Before so, I, so you it, know, it, I came to America. No, but uh, anyway, uh, it was uh, a. Um, in San Francisco, they decided that they wanted to change the method of their toilets, their public toilets. And they went to France and they bought these toilets they make in France that are right on the street corner. Yeah. And they're like in a big oval huh. thing. And then you mm-hmm. open the door and you go inside and you do whatever you're going to do in there. When you leave, it washes. It washes the whole inside of it. It's pretty neat. So what we did on the show, because we felt that it was, you know, it was something that would be fun to do. Uh, we had this guy on my show who kind of did stunts and stuff. And we sent him down there and we had him somehow stall the whole thing out so that he could, it would sense that he left, but he didn't leave. And then he stayed in there while it washed itself out. <laughs> did, he, did he get very wet? Oh, absolutely. He got drenched. Oh. Wow. Okay. But you, you remember those toilets. Are they still there, Ray? Do you know? On oh, where? I didn't hear what you said. What was the, that? These Which toilets toilet? in San Francisco. Uh, the, the green ones that came from France. There's one on Union Square. Oh, the oh. auto toilets. Yeah. 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 Yeah, there's a few of them around. But I think they've taken most of them out. And we had a couple. There's just a couple. We had a couple go in one of them and have sex. Yeah, you know, Those, there because was a they few be, on Market Street, because, but I haven't seen them there anymore. Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't <laughs> unlock from the. You couldn't get into them from the outside as long as somebody was on the inside. It's only really? when they left, and then it would lock itself for about two minutes while it flushed out the inside of the thing, and then the yeah. next person could go in there and use it. Of course, if yeah. you really have to pee, and then you hear all that water sloshing in the inside, I think that could be a problem. They're Perhaps really popular in France. Pee on the outside, all over the place. right all over it. Well, you know what they replaced in France? You know what? those those they always used to say that this was a charming thing about uh, about uh, about uh, Paris, where those little round building, those little round things on a street corner, and they had like a little barrier. Well, that's where people went in and peed. Oh yeah. Okay, but they always oh the how romantic Paris with the papa blah and those things, and you go they urinate in there. That's what those yeah. replaced. Yeah, that's right. Because, uh, and there was a joke when I—it's not so much now, but when when I first started going there, pe- the only thing that people used McDonald's for French people was to go take a piss. That was the joke among French people. Like if they had to pee when they were out on the street, because restaurants or stores would never let you come in and take a pee, so they either had to do it hidden on the corner or go into a McDonald's. At McDonald's, they don't have French fries in Paris. What do they call them? They call them French fries. Pommes frites. Pommes frites, yeah. Pommes frites, yeah. but that's French for French fries. Right. Potato but, fries. But, yeah. but no, what happened was, I'll tell you, when I first went to Paris, there weren't any McDonald's. There was a thing called McKitches. Oh, yeah. And, or Kitches. McKitches or Kitches or whatever. Boy, now we're yeah. getting a lot of people towards the end of the show here. Here comes Kevin. Uh, but the, 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 the deal was... That uh, uh, they were, they were, they got the franchise, but they didn't. They weren't called McDonald's. Well, McDonald's bought them out, and finally went into France. And the French got very mad at their French fries. They hated them. Hello, Kevin, you there? 
Hey, I heard Kevin or Kevin's wife was in the hospital last night. Oh, uh, really? Some Facebook posting, so you might want to ask him. Yeah, but I, he somehow was trying to get on, and he has a problem getting on. Let me see here. I don't know. Uh, he's not there. Oh, uh, well. Um, let, me, let me try calling him. Let me see if that works. That might help. Help him out. Oh, Kevin lives in Hollister. Oh, I didn't know he was so yeah, close. Yeah, he lives in Hollister. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, he's not answering, though. Maybe he has some problems. Maybe he had to. There he oh, is. Oh, there he is. Ke Kevin, you there? Kevin? Can you hear us, Kevin? Yeah. Oh, okay, Kevin. Turn on your camera. I, I just called you back because I noticed you were having some trouble getting on. Yeah. That's L little... iPad I'm trying here. Oh, it's, oh, it's your iPad. Oh. Are you okay, Kevin? I saw some posting on uh, Facebook. Yeah. Doesn't Let's sound good. Figure this. <laughs> well, talk. I can figure this thing out here. Well, you can talk to us, Kevin. Oh, there we go. There yeah. we go. Is it working? Yeah. It was you or your wife that was visiting some hospital last night because of uh, it? Didn't say why. It was an emergency care or something. No, 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 no. I got I got some surgery yesterday. I got my knee oh. cut up. Oh yes, you oh. were telling us you were going to go get your knee done. <clears throat> So how, okay. how is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. How is it? By the way, welcome to Alex Bennett's hospital, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> we, first, we're talking about yeah, whether your insurance is getting it. taken care of and then, uh, then uh, but the pills you're getting. And now we have an actual patient here who's recuperating from a knee yeah. operation. And next week, it'll be filled with his uh, catheter coming out of his dick. Right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> the only healthy, the only healthy I one. The best boner I've had in a while. And I got my numb feet, and I don't know what's wrong with Ray. And you know, Rob's oh, probably got a few problems. And the, Jeff's the only one that's uh, uh, that's uh, that's in good shape because he's working on uh, spare parts. Yeah, you know, so. maybe he's way ahead of us. Yeah. Yeah. No, but so you were, you were, so you had your knee done yesterday. Yeah. He yeah, said he was going to. Yeah, just arthroscopic. The meniscus and... thing. Cleaned up some crap on the meniscus, yeah. Yeah, see, I, uh, yeah. I got a meniscus thing, but you know something? It's not hurting lately. Do they heal oh, yeah, It's funny because they asked me my pain level yesterday, and they go, I go, uh, one. <laughs> I go, of course, I'm here at the mechanic, and nothing's hurting. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I had a torn meniscus. It was painful as hell, and as I suddenly realized today, it hasn't been hurting in a week or so. It's been like I don't even have it. You know, I still yeah. still kind of favor it because I'm afraid of throwing it out. But you know, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. If, we'll if see it doesn't what happens. hurt, don't do anything. Because I, I had I had that surgery and uh, I still have problems. People tell me that they don't those surgeries for torn meniscus don't work all the time. That's why I've 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 hesitated. You know, my doctor said let's just wait and see. You know, it may. Get slightly yeah, I've been, I've been doing that for a year now, so nothing's yeah. gone away. So yeah. I figured, what the hell? Yeah. Between my heel falling off on my left uh, foot and, and, and my the, and knee the, going screwed up on my right, and so. the, uh, the only thing that's wrong—I <laughs> gotta with, get something working. The only thing that's wrong with our uh, our black friend here uh, uh, is is. Um, <laughs> You know, would say black friend? Is, is, is that uh, he? Um, you you had what? A, your heart was done, right? You had a bypass or something? Had quad bypass. Oh, good for you. They yep. brag about that, by the way. I had, I had quad bypass. I well, didn't brag. What did you? I, what did you have, Jeff? You didn't have a bypass, did you? I had. Well, I had my aortic valve replaced three times. Nice. Uh, let's see. I also had a. That's a triple. Yeah, I know. I also uh, had the aorta, which is the big vessel that comes out of your heart yeah and i that uh, regrafted do they uh, do they replace your other thing with a pig valve oh yeah yeah but well, what happens if you're jewish though do they ask you if you prefer <laughs> if you prefer to have something other than a, p a pig valve <laughs> Yes, as long as you don't eat it it's okay oh okay so it's not trafe if it's uh, serving your heart i see okay hey Jeff. <laughs> I, it's funny. It's funny though that they would use a pig valve to solve the problem that was caused by eating too much bacon. <laughs> hey Jeff, I want to thank you for telling us about that because I'm coming up on uh, the ninth year of my bypasses, 
mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I was getting a little, oh, you know, oh, gee, thinking about what the stone said, maybe the last time, I don't know. And uh, to find out that you had that done three times uh, is encouraging that I might stick around long enough to see Bennett croak. Hey, try yeah. this one. Uh, I just got an email today. <laughs> a friend of mine who is a member of my underwater photography club died. What he died from was antibiotic resistant form of pneumonia. Now, this guy was in fantastic shape. He was in his early 70s. He, he would dive under ice caps and do all of this uh, kind of stuff. And uh, uh, anti, uh, antibiotic resistant form of pneumonia. That's a you real that? problem. Well, that's yeah, what happened to my leg. Yeah? That's what happened to my leg. I had an antibiotic uh, resistant form of uh, bone bone uh, uh, infection. It was called MRSA, yeah. And that's how your that's foot That's the cillin resistant, uh, and that's how my legs got uh, neuropathy from <clears throat> an infection. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a staph infection that wouldn't respond to antibiotics. I had like eight or di- nine different kinds of See, intravenous. Folks, by the way, while you're in our wa- respond to while it. you're in our waiting room, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to read the magazines. We have some very good, yeah, good sure, choice I can name there. Off all kinds of antibiotics if you want. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of course, the flesh eating ones are uh, tough too. Vancomycin. And- as, as, long, as, as long as this seems like a doctor's office these days, is, is there any kind of magazines you want, like highlights for children? Do you want one? You want those? What? Highlights for kids? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember when they used to have like ten-year-old Reader's Digest in your doctor's office. You know, um, I was in one doctor's office with the People magazine. I think Jennifer Lopez was still on her first husband. You know, so it's. it's uh, that's what I want to do. Well, this is the first time I, I wasn't put under. They they did an epidural on me and left me awake the whole time. And and the guy uh, said he gave me a little uh, Michael Jackson juice just oh, enough oh, to oh, keep oh, me oh, awake. Oh, 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 oh. Your knee? Wait a minute. Yeah. That stuff put oh, you wow. out. I, mean, they, I asked them to do that and they wouldn't do it. They used it when I did that. When I had my, uh, my uh, uh, what do you call it, where they check your, uh, your uh, uh, colon, uh, colonoscopy. Mm-hmm. They, they, they give you that drug. To put you out, and there's that. There is a moment. There is a there is a moment just before you go under, in which you feel so wonderful, yeah. but it's so yeah, short. And he kept saying, it's like this flash. Okay, of, in. And, and my wife still loves to get it because she says, "I just live for that one like millisecond, yeah. you know, <laughs> where you just just barely talking to the doc." Yeah. You know, Michael Jackson had his own doctor, so he could get that to put him to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. stupid. Yeah, yeah no, I told I, he told me that afterwards. I said, "Well, what did you use on me?" He goes, "Oh, Michael Jackson juice." I said, "Propanol." And he goes, "Yeah, propofol, 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 yeah. whatever." Yeah. Was, yeah, I'll tell you what Didn't happened. Is, I'll tell you what yeah. happened. One day I go over. My wife has to have. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but she had to be put under for something like a. a, a, a what's the one that goes down the throat? You got the, the colonoscopy, Trache- yeah. a tracheotomy, or a tracheoscopy, no. or whatever. Anyway, uh, she, she had to go get it just for them to check about, you know, wh- whether her stomach, uh, her operation had worked well yes. and so on and, and so forth. And endoscopic. And this, and, and this, endoscopy. And, and, and endoscopy. Yeah. And, and they won't let you, they won't let you do it unless you have somebody who's going to pick you up. So she, yeah. she says, meet me. It'll be over about this time. Meet me at the hospital, at the, at the, at the place. And it wasn't in New York. It used to be that doctors in their offices could do this, but now they have to use medical facilities. And there sure. are these sure. for rent medical facilities, right? They're all over town. That's where I had my last colonoscopy done. So I go to see her at this place, and I suddenly realize when I see the name on the door, this is where Joan Rivers died. Oh, yeah. Oh, not good. Yes. This was the place where she went in to go get her stomach looked at, you know, the trachea, whatever that is. Scopy. The, to get her, not her stomach, her vocal cords. Were, were they checking yeah. her vocal cords? Yeah, they were on just her one? vocal cords. Yeah. Raspy, and she went to have her vocal cords looked at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and they and it probably backs up to a bank. Times <laughs> the doctor decided, I would just watch the show on it on that reels. Where they do all the last hours of whatever yeah. it was Joan Rivers. Wow, and- oh, that's got to be a real winning channel. Yeah, uh, but anyway, so that's that's. You where- know, you know what we haven't talked about that we should talk about is hemorrhoids. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> and rubber bands. 
Yeah. No. Maybe not. This is a don't have any. bunch of people, literally and figuratively. I'll catch you in just a little bit. I have to <laughs> yeah, I know you have to go get ready for your show. Jack is on right after this with uh, Amy uh, Irving, is it? Uh, no, Amy uh, 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 Manuel. <laughs> Amy Irving. Yeah, yeah, she's the uh, Long Island Lolita. No, no, Amy Irving <laughs> was per- Steven Spielberg's first wife. Oh, oh, a- who yeah. was Amy? Uh, oh, that who was, was the Long Fish- Island Lolita? Uh, Amy oh, Fisher. Uh, Amy Fisher. Amy Fisher, Fisher. Yeah. yeah. With Joey Buttafuku. Yeah. yeah, who now does porn. Yeah, yeah. she does, yeah. Yeah. Uh, she does? Yes, yeah. she does. And she, yeah, she shot her, her boyfriend's wife. With her husband. Whatever happened to John Wayne Bobbitt? I, I have, by the way, goodbye, uh, Jack. Jack. Uh, I will say goodbye to him so that we, he can John go, Wayne go, Bobbitt, he, he did porno no, also. No, as I said. Yeah, and he was like a minister. I know, I said, my, 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 the moment I said to myself, I just think I have hit, the low point in my career was when I was at the Moonlight Bunny Ranch for Dennis Hoff's birthday party. And somebody wants to take a picture of me with two people who are standing on either side of me. And as they're taking the picture, I realize on one side of me is Jerry, uh, J- Joey. Uh, Joey Buttafuoco, and on the <laughs> other side is John Wayne Bobbitt. <laughs> Oh, and I looked at this and I said, this is the most disgusting moment of my life. I, you know, at least for the first time in my life, a person can see a photo and say, which one isn't the asshole? And, <laughs> you know? do, you, uh, do you sell eight by tens of those at the Gabnet store? You know, I've been thinking about writing Hoff and saying, do you have that picture anywhere? I want oh, that God, picture to get it, you know? But no, John oh, Wayne Bobbitt on one side and Joey Buttafuoco on the other. This is this is like <laughs> you're about as low as you can go on the human scale. <laughs> okay. Buttafuoco used to hang out at this bar that I did on Long Island. I used to see him in there all the time. He'd come in with his entourage. This is right after the whole thing, Long Island. Yeah, it's amazing thing. what people get famous for. You it know, is. he got famous for that. He, he yeah. so did. His wife got shot in the face. He gets famous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? Whatever. I mean, that was, that was a great story. I thought that was a terrific story. And I, oh, yeah. I, I thought, I thought there was something about Amy Fisher that was hot. Does any of you feel that way? Huh? She was a bad <clears throat> shot. You know, <clears throat> she carries a gun. I, I yeah, was, obviously. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, 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 Rob, you were saying something about when I said she was sexy? Not today. Uh, I don't think so at all. She lost her hotness. No, I know. I know. But when she was just well, a... She was porno, young. And, and, and I've seen the porno with her and her husband. And it's oh, just, yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. Uh, uh, to begin with, she got fake tits. That's for starters. Uh, you know. And with him talking to her, like, I, I, it just... That shouldn't be a video. Take it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was brutal. I was like, oh. Oh, it, it yeah. felt dirty. I mean, you know, you talk about being dirty. Yeah. Watch the two of them. That was dirty. <laughs> oh, I had to turn it off. Yeah. Uh, I have to search that up. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, well, you know something? I think I can probably start playing a little bit of, of theme song here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me go get it. There we go. <laughs> A little bit of theme song. Uh, yeah, up to seven. Well, I am glad to hear, Kevin, that you're okay and that your uh, your uh, your operation uh, was was fine and that you're alive and well. And now we have to worry about Phil next Monday, a week from Monday. Yeah. Be a walk uh, in a park. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope it's a walk in the park, or at least it'll yeah, be a this Monday or the, a week from Monday. Uh, a week from Monday, the nineteenth. A week from Monday. Uh, Did you get your jacket yet, Phil? Your NRA jacket? No, no but he's I, getting his. I had my. Pr- I went to the hospital, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> a- anyway, you know, he, they, 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 the NRA hasn't sent it to him yet. Uh, no, and they haven't inquired what size I want. Phil, I, I I give you a bad time, but you're terrific, and I like <laughs> I like you. They're waiting for your check to clear. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and and Rob, <laughs> you know how I feel about you. Uh, the best voice on Gabnet. And uh, uh, there's uh, always Jeff. We love having Jeff here, and we love having uh, Ray here. And, we, of course, Kevin has become a, a regular that we enjoy as well. Hey, thank you all so very much. It's been a nice, uh, nice evening, and we hardly talk politics at all. Give a big wave goodbye so they can all s- wave back. See you later, guys. Thank you. 
and that's it. Wait a minute. I, 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 I hit the button and, and nothing happens? What? There we go. No, that, oh, it did happen. Ah. See how I f screw up on things? Let me just kill the, uh, the uh, uh, stuff here. Okay, let's get rid of all these people. Let's get rid of them. Let's, okay, now we have, uh, we have the Skype all set up for the next show. So everything is just fine. Hey, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. We'll see you again. Uh, let's see here. When, when's the next time we're going to see you? We'll see you on Tuesday right after Damien Chaplin with the Exchange at 930. We'll be here at 10 o'clock. Uh, it's Jack and Amy next with Connections. And then at 1 o'clock, excuse me, with the intersection. And then at 1 o'clock this morning, it's Connections coming to you from Florida. Uh, and then, as I say, we'll be back here after Damien who's on at 9.30, and, uh, well, we'll be here at 10, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.